All right, now I want you people to keep calm, okay? We were calm. We were? What's going on? Okay, now I took this shortcut over, you know, by the stream down the hill, when all of a sudden I see something funny sticking out of the water, right? Well, at first I thought, well, it's just a piece of driftwood that got all churned up after all that rain we had last week. But it and wasn't then... a piece of driftwood. No, it wasn't. Well, then as I got closer, I thought, well, hey, maybe it's just a, a weird rock that's sticking up out of but the water. it wasn't a rock. No, it wasn't. Well, then what was it? Okay, now you promise to keep calm. Look. Look, it's a fossil. I know it's a fossil. You know what this means? It means I'm going to be famous. I can see it now. I mean, young Hispanic finds dinosaur bones. Scientists astound it. I can't wait. Now, Trini, do you really think that's a dinosaur bone? Well, of course. What else could it be? I don't know. Well, well, look. Look at the size of it. I mean, look, this is his leg bone. Can you imagine how big he must have been? Wow. What? What if that's his toe bone? Brontosaurus, who ate only plants and flowers, was 25 feet tall, 70 feet long, and weighed in at over 30 tons. Hmm. The Comsog Nathus was about as big as a chicken, and he ate meat. Okay, Trina, so what are you going to do now? I don't know. Hey, I guess call the newspapers. Uh, wait a minute. We better be absolutely sure it's a dinosaur bone before we start calling newspapers. Oh, come on. Just in case it isn't. Lise, of course this is a dinosaur bone. I mean, just look at it. No, I think Lisa's right. I think you ought to check it out with an expert first. Hey, we should go to the Museum of Natural History. They'll be able to tell us. Hey, Lise, you know, that's a great idea. You know, they'll be able to tell us what kind of dinosaur this comes from. Hey, you know, we should go straight after school tomorrow. That one. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Could you tell me if this is a dinosaur bone? I don't think it's a dinosaur bone. I think it's too small. Well, it's a thigh bone, but not of a dinosaur. Guess it's too small, huh? Well, that's not the reason. It's not a dinosaur bone. It's a leg bone. Uh, but we have some very, very small thigh bones of a dinosaur. Now here's a little fellow called pterosaur. This is a thigh bone or a femur, which is a Latin name for thigh. If you've studied skeletons, cat skeleton, cow skeleton, if you had them set in front of you in a row, you would see that the bones have the same relationships to one another. And this is a femur. There's a femur. It's almost the same size. Yeah, okay. Hmm? Now, how do you know that this isn't a dinosaur if it's almost the same okay. size as that? Okay, first of all, tell? feel it. Does it feel heavy? No, it's, it's not a fossil. It can't be any kind of dinosaur bone, femur or otherwise, because it's not fossilized. This is what you've been looking for. Not the man. No. Well, why not? <laughs> oh, yeah, look, no. Here we have. Take a look at this. Compare the two. Oh. And? <laughs> it's the same. A horse exactly. bone. And I'm going around going to What kind of horse bone? bone? A femur. Femur, right. <laughs> what's this bone here? Same thing, but it's a thinner, yeah. a femur. Bone. Yes, look at the difference. I and mean, that yeah, suggests it's famous, but that's thinner. This, yeah. it suggests different behavior. Yeah. You know what horses do. It's they need a pretty sturdy thigh bone. A man not needing that kind of uh, sturdiness, it's, it's since thinner. he's not running races or pulling plows, and not lately anyway. <laughs> but the relationship is the same, the functions are the same. Right? He's beautiful, <laughs> in a way, I guess. It's very graceful. Come on, Trini, cheer up. I mean, it could have been a fossil. Yeah, it sure could have been. I mean, after all, you found it in a stream bed. So what? So that's where most fossils are found.
fossils are traces of life from the past. There may be tracks of an animal. Or its bones, which become buried in the mud. Millions of years pass. The ocean covers the land. Water seeps into the bones, leaving minerals, which turn the bones to stone. The mud becomes deeper and heavier. More years pass. The ocean floor lifts and becomes dry land again. More years pass. Eventually, the mud containing the bones also turns to stone. The river wears away the stone. The fossil is any trace of life from the past. After our visit to the Museum of Natural History, I realize there's a whole lot I don't know about dinosaurs. The Green River is a good place to start finding out about them, with Denny Davies, a ranger, and Linda West, a geologist, as my guides. She explained that the bottom layers are the oldest because they were created first, hundreds of millions of years ago. We're kind of taking a step way back into the past here from dinosaur age rocks where we launched. We're going to be going into rocks that are quite a bit older here in Split Mountain Gorge itself. That's what you're talking about, right? Right. It was hard to believe that all that rock had been cut through by water. But then the water started getting bumpy, and I began to sense the incredible power which a river has. Linda was sitting on the edge of the raft, like everything was okay. Linda hung on, and we pulled her back in. She was wet and cold, and so we decided to stop for lunch. She was pretty calm about the whole thing. I really had a good time. I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I was going to. I thought I'd be frightened, but it turned out to be great. How'd you ever get interested in geology in the first place? Mm, I guess it was the first job that I had working at a national park in southern Utah. And <clears throat> Geology was all around me, and I couldn't help but get interested. And the more questions I answered, the more interested I got in trying to find out more of the answers. So you must have known a little bit about it before well, you started working? not really. Um, I learned most of it right on the job. Yeah? So for the first couple of weeks, I couldn't answer the questions. And I guess that was you what learned, got me yeah. interested, too. No, what are they? Well, they're called horsetails. Why, I don't know, but you could say mm. they're living fossils. How come you call them living fossils? Well, they're among the very oldest types of plants there are in the world. These were around long before there were any flowering plants or even plants with leaves. This is just basically a simple stem. How long ago? Oh, I guess between 300, 400 million years ago, the first ones appeared. That long? And the, the fossils of them look exactly like the modern plants. Then they were around even before dinosaurs. Right. And during dinosaurs. And during dinosaur times, they might have been dinosaur food. You can find dinosaur fossils almost everywhere in the world. But one of the biggest discoveries was here, in Utah. It's so important that they built this building around it. I got to visit some friends who worked there. It's a rock cliff that has thousands of fossils buried inside it. Actually, a dinosaur graveyard. These men have the job of uncovering them. The first problem is to break away the big rocks. I wanted to see the delicate work. Jim, I'll be right there. Jim is Jim Adams, and he's been working on dinosaurs for 28 years. Nobody knows more about these bones than he does. What's that you're working on? That's the bottom of a huge rib that runs up underneath all the rest of this material. 
I've just about got it cleaned, as you can see. Does it ever get dull? It's kind of like eating peanuts. Once you get started, it's hard to quit. <laughs> well, when we get right next to the bone, we use these tiny ice picks. Then you blow your dust away with a little syringe, and then you take and brush it down good with a stiff, bristled brush. And then you can apply a preservative to it. And uh, that keeps the surface from checking while you go ahead and work on some of the rest of it. Whatever happens if you break a bone? Have you ever broken a piece off a bone by, by mistake, maybe? Yes, we do quite a bit of that. Uh, look right here. Yeah. You can see that a little bit of the surface of that is right. gone. Right. <laughs> when we break something, we just take a little time and glue it back in place and let it dry. Can you just point out a few of these bones and tell me what they are, these fossils? <laughs> Right up in here, we have a nice shoulder blade. And this little baseball glove that with a hole in it is the coracoid. In here, we have a huge toenail <laughs> oh, wow. of one of the brontosaurus-type dinosaurs. Bigger than my hand. Yes. You wouldn't <laughs> no want hand. that animal to scratch <laughs> your back for you, would you? Are lizards what might be considered the remains of dinosaurs? A lizard is a lizard, and a dinosaur is a dinosaur. <laughs> we have two tailed vertebrae which are entirely grown together. How do you think that happened? Maybe a carnivorous dinosaur, a meat eater, might have bitten it there. But it looks like more like maybe one of the big fellows might have stepped on this one's tail when it was just a pup. There has been an injury to part of the tail, and it is healed over into a big blob. Now, in the case of this huge animal here, we have found so much of it in one spot, so we think this animal possibly got washed into the river uh, by a flood, or maybe he mired in some quicksand. The river that had nothing to do with this river here today is what br is responsible for having brought these uh, bones in and concentrated them in one spot like this. Who knows, some 150 million years from now, some animal might come along and zap us out of the rock <laughs> with their antenna or something like that. Anyway, dinosaur bones are found all over the world, except down the hill. But listen, the dinosaur quarry in Utah is unusual because so many fossils were found in the same place. Usually, they're scattered everywhere. Well, if they're usually scattered everywhere, how did they get all those bones together that we saw at the museum? I don't know. Excuse me. What are you doing? Are you making fake dinosaurs? No. We're not making fake dinosaurs. We're making copies of real dinosaurs. Can you tell me, is all of that real or is some of it fake? There you go, fake. There are two words uh -huh. involved. One, replica, and the other, restoration. It, it just so happens that that skull, the tyrann this is the Tyrannosaurus rex we're talking about. The original is in a case in that corner because it's a unique specimen. People from all over the world come to study it. And to put it 18 and a half feet up off the floor would make it very inconvenient for them to look at it. That's the reason a cast, which was made off the original, was put up there. Now, the other word we mentioned was restoration. After all, you figure these are 60, 100 million years old. It's not possible to find every single bone. For example, three ribs are missing. Now, it's possible to restore the missing ribs based on those you have. All right, this is a triceratops. It's the actual fossil. And we've just made a rubber mold off it, and we're going to make a series of copies for other museums. The most small museums don't have original pieces of this kind. Oh, look at that. Is this, this one is, that's already finished? Uh, this is a rubber mold we made earlier of the tail. We filled both halves of this up with glass fiber, such as this, and this polyester resin. And uh, when they both are filled, we put them together like a sandwich. Uh -huh. And in a couple of hours, that plastic sets chemically, and we open the mold up again. We strip it, the mold, the latex off, and we have... Ooh, look at that. This is a copy. So it's two, it's actually two halves and two you stick halves, it together? Two halves, that's right. It's so hard. It's hard, yeah. Of course, this is, you know, fossil bone is hard also, so this is exactly the way the fossil would be if you felt it. The only difference is if you picked it up. Now you can pick that up. Uh -huh. All right, but you would not be able to pick up the fossil. Really? 
It would take two men to pick it up. Right, it's very heavy. Linda, do you have a minute? Yeah, I do. Would you give that? Yeah. Oh, we can. Hi. Hi. Do you work here? Well, just part of the time. I'm going to school. Do you like it? Down. Yeah, I do. I like it a lot. You can handle this now because it's unlike the fossil, it's quite sturdy. So you put your end down and see if you can bring this end around and... It's like putting together a model. Exactly. My name is Linda and I'm 16 and I work in the Dinosaur Hall at the American Museum of Natural History. I became interested in science when I was about eight or nine and my rat died. I decided to become a veterinarian. And then later I decided that I was really into biology and I wanted to become a biochemist. And then my interest shifted to ecology and earth studies. And so I started working at the museum in a special program. My love for the museum and that course, I think, came with dealing with kids there. And being in the hall and dealing with these ancient things that fall apart in your hands, that was it more. Isn't it hard to find a whole complete dinosaur without any bones missing? Yeah, it is. That's exactly why we're making a replica of the Triceratops. How long does it take? to make the whole thing. It'll be a year and a half in the spring. They said it should be done by then. Um, when you find uh, all these bones, about how much of the dinosaur isn't there? That depends. It's, a lot of the time, they're embedded in rocks, so it's how much you can get out without breaking. Some of them, you, some of them even now, when you take them out to do the mold of them, they crumble in front of you. So. You don't want to fracture any of this because this particular bone has not been solidified. In other words, it's not rock-like. No, it it's looks like it's already... very delicate inside. It's coming. Yeah, success. There we go. So now we can get to the back here, along the teeth. The teeth are particularly fine on this specimen. Okay. You see how fine these teeth are? Because these are... The teeth are a main diagnostic feature in these animals. It tells you about the diet, eating habits, and so on. Whether they're carnivorous. Yeah, right. All right, let me just pull this... Okay, there we are. Very good. You see, this is our production mold. We'll be able to produce 25 or 30 of these pieces. To make life-size models accurate in every detail, you have to learn about anatomy and paleontology and the history of the animal and that sort of thing. I've gotten really interested in it now. Start peeling it from your end, Jean. Mm -hmm. Just peel it toward me, you know. Coming, slipping off nicely. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I was never an avid dinosaur person. Dinosaurs, they were great, you know, they're very big. That's about as far as it went. find aren't what you think they are. Well, I didn't get my name in the newspapers for discovering a dinosaur bone. <laughs> That's okay, Trini. You can become famous some other way. Yeah. Nah. I mean, all the big discoveries have already been made. What are you talking about? Nobody has discovered a blitform yet. What's a blitform? How well, should I know? Nobody's discovered it yet. <laughs>
Hey, does anybody know what really happened to the dinosaurs? Why they became extinct? Well, lots of people have theories, but nobody knows for sure. It's still a mystery. A mystery? Uh-huh. Whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double with a bloodhound gang. If you've got the crime, we've got the time with a bloodhound gang. <laughs> All Beethoven needs is a ten-year-old critic. Break one five for a radio check. I thought that sets dead as a mackerel. Break one five. Anyone got your ears on? Why can't you see Be Nuts speak plain English? Go ahead, radio check. You're loud and clear. You fixed it. It's the bloodhound had the squelch knob turned all the way up. Hey, thanks a lot. This is Private Eye wishing good numbers on you. Bloodhound Detective Agency. Whenever there's trouble with there on the double, Mr. Bloodhound isn't here. Yes. Got it, Mrs. Tolliver. Be right there. Cop, do you know the Tolliver house? Find Ricardo and tell him to meet me there. Break one, two, break one, two. This is Private Eye. Look at the space satellite. Space satellite out there? Imagine. Some stranger coming into my house without a proper invitation in the middle of the night. Exactly. How much was stolen, Mrs. Tolliver? My life savings. Every dollar. You didn't put it in a bank? Don't trust banks. Have a watchdog. Dinner time, Eve Cliff. Come on, boy. Hurry up. That's a watchdog? Has a bark loud enough to wake snakes. Can't he wake you up? I never sleep with my hearing aid. Can't hear a sound without it. Follow me. You go on. This is where I kept the money hidden. You really shouldn't be climbing ladders, Mrs. Tolliver. Oh, fiddle faddle. I'm part mountain goat. Money hidden right here in my wedding dress. Isn't it beautiful? And not a moth hole in it after 51 years. I can't imagine how anyone sneaked in and out. Doors bolted from the inside, windows too. Impossible. I kept this house locked up as tight as the bark on a tree. Here's someone's weight card. Haven't been on a penny scale in years. Never saw that before in my life. The burglar may have dropped it. Someone heavy. The weight is printed right here. 264 pounds. Mercy. I got it. The burglar got in and out through the chimney. A 264 pound man. How do we know it's a man? You're right, we don't. Cuff. Put on your ears and see if there are any CBers out there who knows where there's a weight scale that gives out little yellow cards. Let me see your suspects. Breaker 17, Breaker 17. This is the private eye looking for some info. That's her gardener. He's painting Mrs. Tolliver's fence. That's her nephew, Monty. His twin brother was sick in bed when I took the pictures. Mrs. Wilma, her cleaning woman. Now she looks like she might weigh 264 pounds, doesn't she? Did you read that, Private Eye? Benton Place, Street Carnival. Hey, that's the floor. Thanks for the comeback, Canary Mary. Hey, there's a street carnival over on Benton Place. And there's a scale that prints your weight on little yellow cards. Step right up, guess your weight smell as that's 
me, folks. If I get strong, give or take three pounds, you win a valuable prize. Bloodhound Detective Agency, do you remember guessing the weight of a woman? 264 pounds? 264 pounds? Not a chance. No woman that heavy gets weighed in public. A man, then. Can you give us a description? No, uh, I'd remember a gent that day. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Step on the scales together and let me guess. Win two prizes for the price of one if I am wrong. How about it, Vicky? Okay. The both of you. 230 pounds. Get on the scale. Because of this. Is there a clue in the attic? On the scale? Tomorrow, watch Vicky solve the baffling case of the 264 pound burglar. Well, now that I know this isn't a dinosaur bone. What am I going to do with it? It's useless. Don't be silly, Trine. There are lots of uses for that. Sure. Like what? Well... What's going on? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Trini, with what you're carrying, you can make a very big dog very happy for, for a, a very, very long, long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.